warm welcome to all participants from all over the world uh, to the first kickoff webinar for Boards Impact Forum, which is the Nordic chapter of World Economic Forum's Climate Governance Initiative. Today, we will shed some light on the Nordic board leadership today uh, on sustainability, innovation, uh, and on the Nordic corporate governance model and what might the next steps be for all of us. My name is Lisa Dottengstam. I'm the chair of Words Impact Forum, um, but as many of you who are already here online, uh, I'm also a chair and a NED on both listed and private companies. Uh, I will share some short introduction, then I will hand over to our moderator for today, Lisa Kingo. Uh, and shortly thereafter, we will have a framing of the topic uh, with Svante Forsberg. And after that, Lisa will moderate the discussion with a fantastic panel of chairs and NEDs, and then we will do a short conclusion. Uh, we welcome sharing on social media. And if you do, please use the hashtag Boards Impact Forum uh, or the hashtag Climate Governance or both. Questions, you're very welcome to, to send them on mail to today's mod, which means moderator, which is our operations director today, Fernanda Torre. And you can mail her on info at boardsimpactforum.com. Uh, you're also welcome to join us, of course, and you can find that over our website. Uh, and you're also welcome to follow us uh, on social media, uh, both on LinkedIn and Twitter. We just wanted to uh, recognize that we certainly live in very unprecedented times today. Um, and according to World Economic Forum's latest risk map, which this is uh, for 2021, you will find that the risks that have the highest impact and highest likelihood are in majority related to climate. So it's the uh, failure of action on climate, it's the uh, biodiversity loss, etc. And of course, health, and in some ways also a bit of risk in tech in the cybersecurity area. That was the reason that World Economic Forum in the end of 2019 introduced some principles that we at boards could use, which is called the climate governance principles. Uh, and they're actually really handy. Uh, so we uh, recommend everybody to find a way to, to look at them. You find them on our website and of course on World Economic Forum's website. You can actually look at them in three sections or th four sections. And the first section with the three first principles, they all relate to the responsibility and the wor inner workings of us as a board. So the first one is really around the accountability of boards. The second one is what and competence and knowledge do we need to bring in? And the third one is around um, how would we actually find a way to work uh, in the board with this topic? The Board's Impact Forum um, is the Nordic chapter. Our purpose is to engage board directors in Nordics, but we also know that we, know, we draw international insights and to accelerate climate actions and innovation for sustainable business. Uh, it's the forum where we try to raise ambition. We will learn about board's impact and approaches to handle both the risk side and the opportunity side, and also engage with peers and build on the leadership that we already have very much of in Nordics, in innovation, in sustainability, and in our unique Nordic corporate governance model that we will soon hear more about. Here's our initial plans. We will develop and run climate briefings like this one's webinars. We will also run virtual exchanges, round tables. We will start to develop content methods and we will also bring uh, international insights uh, into this. The service is free for board members to expedite learning uh, and ensure Nordic exchange, both within Nordic and internationally. So, you are now sitting on one webinar. Directly after this, we will have uh, the next webinar, which you can also join, which is around the chair roles and practices as drivers of sustainability, um, with, uh, which we're running in collaboration with INSEAD um, Corporate Governance Center. 
and Professor Stanislav Shikshnia will, for the first time, uh, shed some lights on brand new research on chairs roles and sustainability. So don't miss to join that. Following that, in May, we will run a fantastic webinar on the success across generations, leading family business boards with a sustainable impact, which we um, uh, have um, uh, a fantastic group of a distinguished fellow, Martin Roll. We have Chair Lena Hofsberger and board member Peter Alstrom joining us. June 30, uh, in the morning time, because we're likely going to run that together with an international group. We are fortunate to have Henrik Henriksson, the current CEO of Scania, soon moving over to the H2 Green Steel and the NED of Electrolux, and Elaine Weidman Greenwald, who's the NED of Sveco and European Sustainable Growth Acquisition Corp, and the former sustainability officer of Ericsson, share a fantastic uh, insight on sustainability leadership a Swedish approach to transforming your company, your industry and the world, but with a board view. And in August 26, we will have competence for strategic sustainable business, where Lisa, which we will meet today, will uh, come back and share some fantastic insights on uh, a research done on the competence levels together with Arne Karlsson, who's a chair and Ned, um, and with Meta Morsing, who's a professor and also a med. So we invite you to check out many of our future webinars as well and join us. This is just a start. We want to thank all of our engaged advisors. We have a fantastic uh, strategic expert and academic advisory board, and you can find many of them on our uh, webinars here today, but you can also find them on our website and you can meet up with them. We also are deeply gra uh, grateful to our partners, uh, FCG, DLA Piper, uh, Prime, Studels Akademin, and the Danish Board Network, which are really a good uh, and interesting partner for us to work with, and we're very grateful. Now, it's my joy to introduce my board colleague, Lisa Kingo. Lisa has a long background working in business, but also working with getting sustainability weaved in to the strategic facets of business. And she's done that um, in her role as responsible for the area at Novo Nordisk. She has also uh, a long background from leading the UN Compact uh, and driving all of these questions. She's now in NED at Sanofi and at Boards Impact Forum, and we're so glad you're here today to take us through the rest of the hour. Welcome, Lisa. We're excited to hear what you have to say. Thank you so much, Lisa Laudu. It's a great pleasure to be here today and uh, to moderate our first panel, which is extremely exciting. And uh, I'm so happy to introduce you to our speaker today, Svante Forsberg. Uh, who is the chair of the Swedish Academy for Board Directors and an NED at Lenebo Fondor. And I can't think of a better person, Svante, to uh, give us the background uh, of uh, the Nordic governance model and shape us up for the panel uh, that we will begin afterwards. The word is yours. <clears throat> Thank you, Lisa. Lot, Lisa. It's uh, Lisa Lot and Lisa. It's uh, very uh, nice to be here, and I uh, will do my best to frame the, the discussion. Uh, <clears throat> and um, I will start with a short uh, bragging about the Nordic region. Um, we we are well known for leadership in sustainability and innovation. And I will cover during my presentation this the, this introduction slide that you see um, on, on the slide there. And then uh, we have some sustainability and innovation statistics, um, and then uh, discuss corporate governance in the Nordic region. And then in the end, uh, have some discussion about the ambition and, and also improvement opportunities uh, in this area of sustainability innovation before we, we have the most exciting part of the, the this um, session, of course, the, the panel discussion with, with, with a very prominent uh, <clears throat> participants. 
Um, the first slide, uh, I think the main message here is uh, that the Nordic region is a small but a very stable region. We have about 27 million people here uh, and, and we are very high ranked uh, among the, the least uh, fragile countries, uh, uh, human capital index, most uh, multinational companies per capita, uh, most resilient companies during the pandemic pandemic uh, the last year then but also maybe <clears throat> some surprising uh, that we are also among the happiest countries in the world uh, maybe uh, depending on the ambition that we have uh, maybe we are a little bit depressive but, but we have a very high high ranking there uh, and that is of course uh, some factors uh, are in, in below if you, you can uh, change um, take the next slide please um, uh, I think, oh, may, okay, sorry, uh, maybe it's all, all, only for me, that we have a strong democracy, we have a high quality of institutions, uh, um, thank you very much, um, uh, uh, low levels of corruption in, in general, we have uh, quite reliable welfare benefits and so on, so that is sort of the, the framing uh, while we actually uh, at least well, the researcher think that we, we are among the, the, the top uh, one to eight happiest countries in, in the world. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, if could go a little bit back. Um, I think one reason why, why the companies are very high ranked in this area is that we have an active and long-term owners uh, where the two thirds of these companies in, in the Nordic countries have at least one shareholder uh, on more than 20%. And that is very high compared to other, to other um, uh, regions and other countries. So that, I think that I will come back to that during uh, the presentation of the corporate governance uh, uh, framework. So I think we can, we can uh, move to the next slide. Uh, and that covers sustainability in the Nordic region. And um, there are a lot of different rankings, of course, but um, uh, one is corporate nights, and, and there we can see that uh, more than 10% of the, of the companies are in top global companies when it comes to sustainability is, is from, from Nordic countries. Today in the in the panel, we have represented for, for Ørstad, which was uh, ranked first uh, last year, and also from Orkla. So we have a very prominent um, uh, panel, as we said, but also we can see companies like Neste in Finland and Ericsson in Sweden are very high ranked in, in uh, this um, uh, ranking for, from corporate nights. But we also have um, uh, other, other uh, good rankings in, in the Momentum Performance Index, Global Sustainable Competit Competitive Index, uh, and so on. So we can see it's a relative stable pattern that we have, at least historically, um, in this, this area. So I think we, we can say that we have a good position that we have to, to uh, defend, but also that we can work, uh, work from and learn fr from each other. And this is what, what, what we'll be discussing later on in this, in this um, seminar. Um, if you can, uh, can take the next slide, please. Um, um, also, as I said, innovation in the Nordic region, we have a fairly very good position. Uh, as you can see, we are on the top three countries in Global Innovation Index, um, three of the best 10. Uh, we have the, in the, when we come to European level, we have the top three countries uh, uh, of the three, uh, fin uh, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark in, in lead. And that is a ranking done by the European Co uh, Commission. Um, and uh, we can say also we, we are in a good position when it comes to startup, uh, where Sweden is the, the maybe most prominent uh, uh, country in that respect. So I think we have a sort of a, a good, um, platform um, to discuss uh, from or to 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 improve from, uh, and and we will do that in, in a moment. But before that, I wanted to give some perspective on on the corporate governance system in the Nordic region, which I said in the start uh, is one of the main factors. I think at least when it comes to to the to the company side. 
Uh, this is a slide uh, where we compare um, three models. Um, in the left, the two-tier model, uh, primarily uh, in the continental Europe, uh, Germany, Netherlands, uh, and so on. Uh, and, and to the right, you have the one-tier model, which is primarily the Anglo-Saxon countries, uh, UK and US. Um, and in the middle, um, the Nordic model, uh, which is quite similar in, in, in all the four countries, so, some, some difference, but, but in general, very, very the same, same model. Um, if we look upon um, the Nordic model, uh, <clears throat> some stakeholder considerations and interests, what, what is, what, how is the model look like? <clears throat> and the first um, item that I just briefly commented on before is that we have very active long-term strong owners, but also uh, which difference from, from other um, models is that also the owners are participating in the board. So that, that is also an, an extra sort of twist on that. Um, we also have, uh, the owners have a nomination committee um, in, in, for instance, in the, the one tier model, the board uh, elects themselves more or less. Uh, but in, in, in the Nordic region, we have nomination committee consisted of, of, of the main owners um, um, that, that um, elect or, or um, present the, 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 the proposed uh, board, board to, to, the, to the shareholder meeting, general meeting. Um, and uh, the nomination committee also consists of owners, of course, uh, but can also consist of other professionals or, or, or um, also from, from investors, uh, minor investors uh, in, diff in, in some cases. So it's sort of, sort of um, uh, that, and that I think is a very important tool for uh, making the board more diverse and, and, uh, and um, also uh, sort of next generation and so on. We also have a long history of, of minority owner protection uh, and um, uh, that goes way back. Um, and um, if you compare to, to other, in other countries, the price for a controlling shares are, are, are relatively low co compared to other countries. So that is sort of a, um, a good, we talked about, uh, in the start that we have a sort of a very clear framework and this uh, minority owner protection is very, 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 very strong in, in the Nordic countries. We also have, um, as one of the most important stakeholders, we have the employee representatives in, in boards uh, since a long, long time. And that is also, a, as, as my experience, a very good protection for, for, for a good and open discussions in, 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 the, in the board. Um, other other components um, which is not described here is we have a, a lot of self-regulation in, um, in in the in the Nordic countries, which uh, I'm sure raises a bar for how how to perform in 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 the the companies. We can set the bar much higher than if you have legislation that that makes the bar lower. So so this is uh, I think is a very important component in, in the Nordic model. And also that we have a modest incentive, uh, uh, ex ex executive incentive systems um, compared to, especially in the UK and US. So that is sort of, of, of um, uh, um, the framework. Uh, um, and also in principle, the only, only independent non-executive directors in the board uh, and they are elected for one year, and they the, the, they only represent the company that, that, that they are on the board of. So that, um, that's also a very important uh, part of our, our our system. And also the share chairman and the CEO role are separated. If we look upon uh, the the models, um, uh, the, the two tier model on the left, they have a very clear distinction. Uh, from one one hand, the the owner side oversight on the control of the company uh, and the executive team management board. So it, it's um, they are sort of very very far away from from the management board, don't intervene in the management board work. While the one team model more or less uh, don't have any distinction between 
the, the control and oversight and, and the executive uh, work. While the Nordic model is a little bit between, it, it's more closer to the executive management uh, than the, than the two-tier model, but not as far as, as the, the UK model or US model. So, um, uh, and to reflect on that, um, you could say that uh, in theory, uh, the one-tier model uh, can make faster decisions since they're only one sort of group that are working together. Um, uh, but it's also less controlling uh, when it comes to, for instance, the executive pace. So that, that is sort of distinction that we have. And, and at least historically, um, the Nordic model has, we have been good at um, combine long and short term issues. Um, that has been one of our strengths, at least, at least in, in the historic. Um, if we uh, take the next slide, please. Um, um, uh, talking about uh, ambitions and improvement opportunities. Uh, we have very high ambitions here in, in, in the Nordic countries. Um, uh, lead, Nordic leaders, both political and, and business leaders, uh, has um, uh, set very high ambitions. We should be the Nordic region aims to become the most sustainable and integrated region in the world in, in within in uh, less than 10 years. Uh, and that will require a reduction of greenhouse emissions by 70%. And there is a lot of um, uh, programs um, emphasizing the, um, this, um, <clears throat> this goal, the, the goal. So uh, in different countries, we have, we have um, different actions. Uh, most very, very, in, can I say very important is that, that the different uh, sectors with different uh, type of type of businesses have, have different uh, opportunities and, and and threats here. So it's very important that you don't have the same same rules for every every sector, banking, uh, uh, yeah, um, production and so on, air, air, airlines and so on. So it be sector driven. Of course, we have room for improvements, um, and and uh, one area is um, to integrate sustainability in, into business. And here we can see on the slide that that um, the Finnish, Finland, and, and Sweden has relatively higher integration. Uh, Finland, among two or third companies, has um, more or less integrated sustainability into operations, while the Norway is around one third. So there, there is, there is, and, and I think that is more uh, probably the most important thing: how to integrate, if you integrate the sustainability into operations or not. Uh, and uh, we can also see the pattern that the larger companies, in general, not not every every company, but in general, is ahead of mid-sized and smaller companies in in this respect. So, um, so to integrate is very very important. Um, uh, our weak spots then, uh, governance uh, stands out as the weak, weakest area, uh, around one third of, 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 of uh, uh, the board members uh, express low knowledge about risk and opportunities related to ES ESG. I don't think that that is very uh, surprising. Uh, it's a very, ESG is a very, very broad perspective and very broad area. And we are just in, in the starting point of, of working with those uh, questions in a more structural way. So it's very much also connected to the integration part I just mentioned. And, and um, as a final reflection, Nordic board members need to come together and to, to discuss and increase insights. And that is what this uh, session is also all about. So I think that um, uh, this is my final uh, remarks and and uh, I jump over to you again, Lisa. And thank you. Thank you so much, Svende, for um, an excellent presentation and giving us a, a wonderful backdrop for the panel discussion that will start in a moment. I think you captured very well that this is a little bit of a double-sided sword. I mean, of course, the Nordic countries have excellence in many different areas, as you illustrated, but we also have a big challenge. 
since the countries have a major uh, climate footprint to reduce uh, our CO2 emissions significantly over the coming years, which is also why we now have um, the climate guidelines and this wonderful initiative so we can ensure that this agenda really comes into uh, board agendas, not only in the Nordic countries, but across the world. Mm -hmm. So spend many thanks for that. Um, now the time has come to introduce our wonderful and distinguished panel that we have with us uh, today. And let me start with Adele Brand Norman, who is the chair of Salaris, NED of Yara and uh, STB uh, Sundal. Um, Harry Pekka Kaukonen, chair of a uh, EIT, Lindstrom Group and NED of Tier to Every. Uh, Anne Mosberg is with us today, NED at Skipstead, at Orkla, at Swisscom and Swedbank. Thomas Tuna Anderson, the chair of Ørsted and Lloyd's Registrar, NED at IMI and BV Group. And um, uh, let's, uh, let's get started. And um, uh, Thomas, if I may start with you. So um, we have now heard Svendis presentation. You have a lot of experience um, as the chair of, of Ørsted, uh, having um, been driving the climate agenda for several years uh, from that starting point. So would you mind starting to, to share with us how you are driving climate and sustainability from your position as a chair and NED? Yes, and thank you. And, and I would love to do that. And I would also like to make a reflection a little bit about what's happening in the rest of the world, because uh, I think we, we need to be uh, cognizant around that. So um, it all, I think, starts with purpose uh, and uh, um, in, in this case, if I look at the Ørsted journey, uh, it's helpful that a purpose is that we believe in a world that runs entirely on green energy, uh, because that means that, that our actual business, our business case is actually the energy transformation. So in a way that makes it easy because we are fortunate and lucky to, to be there. So if, if we scale that out and, and, and try and look at how we, we work with that, it is very much about making sure that the things we do ourselves and so on and so on should be as sustainable and as right as at all possible. I think that's needless to say, but it is really now kind of taking it out to the supply chain, taking it out to what you call scope one and two, uh, which is ourselves and then scope three. But it's important here that it is not just saying to all the suppliers and so on, now you have to, now you have to know, because we need to actively engage with them. We need to both set some very high bars for what they need to do uh, and know enough about how to try and do that, but also to engage positively ourselves with them, to be prepared ourselves to put money there or to make joint research programs or to maybe find a way if they are coming back to us and saying, but our bottleneck, et cetera, is these things. So it is that kind of proactive and being prepared to take the consequences of that. So I think that's where a lot of the, the, the practical uh, things are today. And there's so much in this agenda we should be talking about, but, but that is where we need to do the things ourselves right, but we also need to engage with, with the environment around us to make sure we do that right. I just think we need to be conscious that the successes of the Nordic model and so on also as described, I think it hinges on the social trust and it hinges on the large shareholders. But we are seeing, if I look at the UK, five, four years ago, we didn't really talk about these things. Now it is top of the agenda. They have a different approach to it because it's slightly more rigid, it's slightly more uh, governance structures and so on. But if you look at section 172 as introduced in the UK, et cetera, I find that the debate is much more active in the UK as an example than it, for example, is in, in the Scandinavian uh, countries. And it's much more about reporting, but it is changing the agenda. So we just have to be careful that we don't fall asleep but we have a very good platform, we have a very good structure, and in a way, one that is slightly nicer to work with 
but but we just have to be conscious that things are happening so fast around the world. Mm -hmm. Thomas, wise words from a former winner of the Corporate Knights World's Most Sustainable Company, I believe in 2020. So yeah, we, we shouldn't rest too much of our, on our laurels here in the Nordic countries. Adele, may I, may I ask you, I mean, how do you see that? And, and how are you driving this agenda from, from your uh, board positions? Um, no, I think Thomas touched on some important, important issues that, that uh, we have to look into ourselves and we all have to actually understand that we are all responsible uh, together to act, to act in the right way and drive this in the right direction. And if we then look a bit more inwards into our own companies, we have been in my board very concerned at looking at how can our companies be, be future proof? Where, how, how can we build this company to actually be where we need to be long term? Uh, and, and that uh, together with then handling the purpose driven part of it so that we actually meet it in the correct way. So um, this, this climate change is really a, a, a very disrupting business factor for many of the companies uh, I'm involved with. Um, they, they create both uh, huge risks and huge opportunities. So that is a lot of how we approach it as well. Uh, we look into how can we put this into a risk and opportunity perspective? How can we, from there, uh, both from uh, the physical risks being the exact, you know, extreme weather and climate changes, but just as much the transitional risks in, in how we're going to do this transition, how can we put this into a strategy? Uh, and that, that's really where we start to actually look at how can we evaluate this, how can we map this, and then, and then the company can include this into a strategy. And that strategy is obviously very different from business to business and from the decision of whether you want to be a leader in this transition or whether you uh, simply want to, to, to take a step back and, and adapt uh, as, as the general market is moving ahead. Uh, but, but the aim for all of them is really to be, be there at the end of the day where we need to be to adapt to this very new, uh, very new world we're going to actually live in, which will to a very large degree uh, change the demand and the supply curves in a way. So if you look at it as simple as that, as how, how will they be, um, we, we, we've tried to build it around that. Excellent. Um, so, so Adele, I really like the phrase you had. This is about turning business risks into opportunities. Um, yeah. Do you have a good example of how uh, one of your boards have been doing that? Um, yeah, I think I think in in one of our boards we we used some time. I mean, that was uh, a company that was a heavily uh, emitter or carbon dioxide emission was was sure. very large in the existing operations. So it was definitely not sustainable. So we used quite a long time on actually mapping. We got external consultants in mapping where we were. Uh, looked a lot at the UN uh, sustainability goals. Where are we compared to them? And try to understand um, how we going to do the transition in what areas. Uh, and, and so it was a lot about, we understood the why, but it was very much about the how. How are we actually going to handle this? Uh, and, and after finding um, a strategy we're going to develop and act on, uh, part of that is actually a bit back to also what Thomas was saying, that we, we need to, the, Nordic is, the Nordics are actually very, very good at innovations, and we need to be part of that, not necessarily only by ourselves, but by partnerships. So we said we're going to do a, a yeah. tremendous transition. 
uh, but we can't let it get in the way of our existing operations. Uh, we can't let it necessarily be a risk of being too capital incentive. Uh, and to do this, we need to partner. We need to partner up with others. Uh, so, so that is very much what we are at doing now. We, we're setting up new companies or new areas and saying who are the best one we can partner up with in innovation or in being maybe some of the main uh, actors within that sector and, uh, and being large enough in driving this innovation to also then be able to take part of uh, governmental subsidies and others yeah, yeah. because you are a main driver in handling handling this absolutely so the, the the whole partnership area i think it's excellent to bring that up because these are big challenges and nobody will will fix it on their own so so anna let's get a little bit more into innovation and the whole innovation agenda that surrounds the climate and sustainability challenge and you know i i can't think of anybody better to ask than you i mean you, you focus very much on digital. You sit on four extremely innovative companies. So how are you driving this agenda from your perspective? Well, I think uh, from, I, I'm lucky enough to be in, four, in the boards of four companies who have a really structured approach to their work with sustainability. But I think as, as previously mentioned, it all begins with setting sustainability in the core of your strategic focus. And then, of course, creating a governance structure so it doesn't just end up with words, but it's actually also followed up and measured. And governance structure is, of course, everything from KPIs to code of conduct documents to how you put it up. And also how you organize your work in the company, obviously, is most important, but also in the board. So you allow the sustainability questions to take enough time in the board and be worked with for enough time, so to say, to have the right focus on the questions. Because that's, I think, where you really get to the bottom and you are able to take like the question to the next level. But the most important thing I think is then to sort of live what you preach, mm -hmm. to not shy away from taking business decision that actually leads the company in this direction. And since I'm also in a financial industry company, I also have the ability to accelerate other companies' uh, journeys into a more sustainable future. Or uh, on the contrary, like we just did in, in Swedbank, where I'm a board member, we took a decision to stop financing, direct financing of, um, uh, of uh, unconventional fossil fuels. So I think that's a very hands-on uh, example of really living the values that you talk about. Mm -hmm. So Anna, it's interesting. I mean, there's no doubt that within the recent years, the financial sector has really stepped up and taken a quite dramatic role in, in driving this whole agenda. So can you share a bit about, I mean, how have you seen that from your chair being on the board of, of, of Swedbank? Yeah, I think we have taken steps. I'm not, I mean, I've just been in the board uh, 2018, uh, 19, 20 and 21, just so you have my, <laughs> it's, yeah. not a, it, it's not a decade of experience from the inside of, of a financial institution board, but already in these years, I can see a, a, a large step forward in the amount of time the, the granularity and the focus we have on this subject in terms of also measuring it and, and following up on the questions. So, so I think that is, is really where we see that we have a large impact. And I think there is, it's really in the middle of the agenda of almost everything we do in that company, but also in other boards where I'm in. And I, I think financial industry is one uh, way of accelerating the question, but, but also if I look at Orkla, who was mentioned before, uh, it's, a, it's an FMCG company, but also a very, very large um, food provider uh, in the Nordics. And here we have a, a sustainability responsible also to drive, for instance, to a more plant-based uh, product portfolio, which has a huge impact on Absolutely. society in the Nordics. So I think with, with this focus and the actions you take, you can make pretty big shifts in this area 
in a reasonably short time, I would say. Yeah. So the snowball is rolling. Things are really happening these days. Yes, it is. So, so Harry Peckham, may, may I come to you and um, um, and 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 just ask you? So um, now we have the whole background and some very good examples of what needs to be done. So, what do you think are the next steps that boards must do to be able to even better? address these topics. I mean, I think the truth is that we have great examples from this panel, very uh, competent board members, but do you think that's the case in, in, in other boards and, and what to do if, if, if not? Yeah, I, I, I think the situation varies quite a lot between companies. I think as uh, Thomas and Adele mentioned uh, companies where the business is very much purpose driven, where the purpose is related to sustainability are quite far ahead. So you don't really need to worry about the company, it's sort of in the DNA of the company. And then if you take, for example, a construction company, which may not be so far ahead in the curve, but where on the other hand, have a truly huge uh, need to change the whole industry where about 30% of the CO2 emissions are related to, 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 to the, the whole industry. Uh, it, I, I think that the answer is sort of simple. It's, it is, it's been said here again. You need to understand, do the situational analysis and get uh, true understanding what the risk and opportunities are. So you need to get it into the core of the strategic discussion and debate in the board. And then uh, the risk, of course, is then that you add something, it's kind of added on, like sometimes risk management used to be in the past days. So, again, I fully share the notion that this needs to be integrated into the board work, in the governance processes, in the board agenda, and, uh, and, and, and therefore part of the strategic and risk discussions, and, and also um, in the target setting of management, and then, then sufficient reporting. But I think fundamentally, any change is dependent on culture, right? So we need to set the behaviors and that's where the board needs to set an example in the discussions with the management. And then it, it also goes all the way down that you cannot you know, demand big changes in this area if you then, for example, focus on only short-term profit improvement on very operational stuff. So you need to create the space all in terms of time resources, but also in terms of the investment agenda for these things. And, and obviously the answer depends on, 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 on the given company or situation, but, but I think that the tool set is the same. And, and in my experience, once you get the strategic agenda coming, then normally, at least in the Nordic situation with the nomination committees and basically an annual review of the board competencies, the, the, the competence question sort of sorts itself out quite naturally. And I think the question then is whether one has the courage to set the ambition high enough to, to really make, make things more. Sure, yeah, absolutely. So um, I wanna talk and revert a little bit back to the Nordic model before we wrap up with asking each of the panelists to prepare a just one minute a takeaway statement for all of you that, that, that are listening to, to our seminar. But you know, the Nordic model uh, is a little bit special. And I think as you could hear from, from uh, Svende's presentation, uh, it has a lot of benefits, but does it also have some drawbacks that we should be aware of now that we are sort of entering into, um, how should I say, um, new challenges. So, so Sven, what do you think, having been engaged in Nordic governance for so many years? I mean, what should be innovated? What should be done different going forward to make sure the Nordic countries are still um, in, in, in the top of things? Mm. Oh, thank you, Lisa. No, it, um, it's a very relevant and a very good question. And, and uh, if we could answer that, we will be very, very strong in the future, of course. And the, but, but I think historically we have had a very, uh, as mentioned before, a very good dialogue. Uh, and I think companies like IKEA very strongly dialogue with with the supplier chain, the supply chain very early. 
We have SAS that was uh, very strong in, in setting pressure on the, on the um, production of, of, of Erlang Motors, Ross Lorris and, and others. So we can see that, and that has been a dialogue. And I think um, what we, we would have more of is what, also what Anna said, that really focus on, on getting things done. Uh, we, we have a sort of consensus culture in, in, in the North, especially maybe in Sweden, uh, less in Finland and Norway. Um, and I think that is a very important thing that we really have to, to deliver things. We, we can't just discuss and, and, and plan. And so it's very easy to, to make good plans. Uh, it's, it's more difficult to execute on the plans. I think that is an area that we need to be more focused on um, because we have to be more both we have to, to um, um, both be competitive we ha and also work with climate issues and integrate those and also in, in but we also have to be very um, listening into the society what is what is the, the society around us how what, what they do they expect of us as companies and so on so we don't have to be we have to live in that sort of um, culture and, 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 and in, in, in the surrounding um, society. But, but I will also, uh, if I may, uh, 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 mention a risk that, that I think is very important that we can handle. And that is a proposal coming from the European, European Commission uh, in the framing, the name is Sustainable Corporate Governance. And, and the, the proposal is very much like an old Soviet system sort of um, ghost plan play, planning system uh, where they, they um, want to, to sort of reduce or, or um, keep more um, cash in, in, the, in the more mature companies like Swedbank. Uh, and, and today the, 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 the cash in Swedbank are, are uh, transferred with dividend to, to the shareholders and the shareholders invest uh, in new ventures. Uh, it, it, um, and and Nordic, the Nordic countries has a quite good um, uh, capital market system. And if, if, if the, the, the cash are, are left in the, in the mature companies, it will be less, less cash to, to the more innovative and, and, and climate-related companies, for instance. So I think that is a very important thing. We're talking about the internal things, but the, uh, one of the main external threats is that will be more uh, uh, risk for less, less investment in, in more uh, innovative companies. Um, so I think that is very important for us to protect um, um, uh, the, the model that we have, uh, not because it's weak model, because it's a good model for, for the Nordic countries. So I think uh, I, I ask everybody to be very active and, and, and uh, guerrilla soldiers in that, that uh, proposal that comes from the commission. Yeah, thank you so much, Svende. That's an extremely good point. I mean, Keeping an eye on what comes out of the EU is crucial. Mm. I mean, the CCFD is a little bit of a challenge for everyone, um, I, I, I think, as well. Thomas, before we go into the final comments from each panelist, may I ask you, so have you seen anything in governance models from other parts of the world where you are working that we could take inspiration from in the Nordic model? Sorry, I just had to demute. Um, I, I, there's a debate often between the 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 the, the, uh, the, the Nordic models and, for example, the uh, one tier model, where of course management are board members with the responsibility that a board member has, so they become responsible for this ESG again agenda. So there's something about kind of the role of management in this, and, and, and I'm not saying one system is better than the other, but it facilitates a slightly different discussion because the, the, the board members who are executive, they have to make board decisions, they can't take management decisions in the boardroom. Of committees, I think, is an interesting debate to have. The, in the Nordic model, we don't really like to use committees very much. In some of the others, they use committees quite a lot. And, and the question is, and the debate is right now, should you really create an ESG committee, which I'm seeing in a lot of companies? And I, that can be good because it can accelerate things or it can be a hindrance. But I think to have a conscious awareness about how do we accelerate some of these things 
And I have seen successes with doing it as a committee or as I'm seeing in other places where one board member becomes responsible by with the health and safety, becomes responsible as a spearhead. It's still a board issue, but somebody who gets more involved without taking the authority away from management. So there's something around the debate around committees, yeah. Yeah. pros and cons, but I think yeah. it's a discussion worth having. Yeah, and maybe what we are experiencing with ESG today is what hit many companies like five years ago with the digital challenge. So there might be a bit of learning there as well. Yes. So <laughs> my dear panelists, now it's the time for the final recommendations to our audience. What would you like to share best practice, good ideas from, from your experience in, in your board work? And uh, Adele, may, may I start with you? Uh, no, I think it's um, be bold. I mean, the, the ambition level mm. when you look at the different national climate plans are high. So this is coming, this is being driven, driving, and, and you can see all the stakeholders for a company will push uh, every company to move in the right direction. So be bold, be ambitious, ambition, ambitions in the sense of start reporting. Uh, start measuring, find your uh, key measure uh, items. And if you have started, look at how you can, look at how you can actually uh, go further and integrate it with your existing reporting. So we're Perfect. moving towards an integrated reporting and start handling the reporting side and the measurement side. Thank you, Adele. Very clear, excellent. Harry Pekka, what is your advice? Yeah, my, my advice is, is to build on purpose and, uh, and sort of two points. Uh, if you have it, then, then leverage to the maximum and, and build the ambitious targets on that. But the other point, which has not been talked about, is that given where we are in our societies, uh, our employees are very passionate about this topic. So find a way to use them and leverage that as a, as a momentum and a, and a force. Um, it can be very powerful also to de-bottleneck if you have, then, let's say, some uh, you know barriers in the upper levels of management. So I've seen it in a couple of companies where to the surprise of management, they did some surveys and woof, it was like 90% were fully behind it. And that gives courage and belief to make some of the tough choices. Perfect. Super. Anna, what's your advice? Yeah, my advice would be to really dare to set the bar high in this area and then uh, follow up with measuring, transparent measuring, but don't just measure one time per year but make sure it's a KPI structure so you can push the development throughout the year and during the work because it is work. And then I would say the final thing is don't shy away to take the business decision to follow up on that bar, on that ambition level. Excellent, very concrete, we can do that. Svente, what's your one-liner for all of us? <clears throat> yeah, it's very, very wise advice already, so I can't, uh, but I, I'm way in the same way as uh, Harry Pekka. I think uh, purpose and culture is extremely important, um, that, that, because that would drive change. Mm -hmm. but, but also, uh, what uh, Maya has some, some measures, as, as some other have, uh, make bold goals, uh, and, but increase the uh, execution uh, compared to today. Um, as we can measure, as, as Anna said, uh, that is more, done more, but um, um, bold goals and, and, uh, and strong execution. Perfect, spot on. Thomas, you get almost the last word. Thank you, and I would like to kind of leverage on being bold, but I'll try and be even more specific about the gold target, a bold target, and that is that we should go out and say it's not good enough to be carbon neutral. We have to pay back, pay back the CO2 we have done. In Velux, where I am lucky to be indirectly the chairman, we have simply set the goal that on our 100 years birthday in 2041, we will have repaid all the CO2 we are putting out. And it's only goals like that that starts making any changes. Everything else is kind of just fiddling around and making small changes. So do that. The other one is about the young people. Mm. The young people are already there. 
you know, we sometimes in business are thinking, oh, we need to do this and this will mean changes for the organization. This will be horrible. It's not good. The young people are already there. They are waiting for us to make these decisions. So um, listen to them. You have all said the same thing, but, but, but they are already there. They are waiting for us to do it. Thomas, thank you. And um, thanks to um, a fabulous panel for um, wrapping up our discussion in such a powerful way. I think um, the recommendations um, that came out of the panel are very clear. It's something we can all take back and do tomorrow, which is what we like, taking action. So you heard it already, be bold, be ambitious set the new kind of goals that are really radical and innovative, make sure that you invite all the employees, the young people, that you take a starting point in the purpose of the organization and that you make the measurements and the business decisions that are now totally um, integrated with climate and sustainability. So, um, uh, as Nelson Mandela said, it all looks so difficult until it's done. I think we know pretty much what to do. So uh, let's get on with it. And uh, thank you so much for uh, listening in. Thank you to uh, all our great partners and advisors to the entire panel. I hope you will stay tuned on this channel uh, for the next webinar that will start at six o'clock. Uh, and I hope you will join the webinars we will organize in the future where you will also see the panel again. And hopefully we can be as inspirational as I hope you, you felt uh, this session was. So um, uh, I would now like to um, close this seminar, but ask you to uh, stay online. Thank you so much to all the panelists and um, enjoy uh, the rest of the show here. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. This is the host, Johanna. It's in another channel. I just want to point that out. So, so in the we next webinar, it's in another channel. Thank you. Thanks, Johanna. All right. <laughs>